I mean, I always watch films in two different ways. I love, I love movies as an as, as an audience, as just a normal audience member. I love watching movies because I love the genre of movies, any genre in movies. So I I try and watch a movie or a TV show or anything I watch or documentaries which I love um, purely as an audience member, as someone who wants to see it to get entertained or you know to 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 get out of my normal life or you know whatever people do to watch a movie for so i love i love that because i just love movies as an art form um obviously being a cinematographer and being someone who's highly critical of my own work and who's very interested in learning and and seeing different ways of doing things I always watch movies as a cinematographer. So as that, I, I watch it very observantly and, and, you know, I try and figure out how someone has, why they've shot it that way, how they've lit it, you know, how, what they've used to light that scene that way. Obviously, especially things that I like, I'm watching it over and over to try and find out how have they done that, because it's something that I enjoy doing, but also it's something that, you know, I want to take away from other movies because it's something, it's all all of that watching films and, and seeing stuff, you know, it's inspirational and it gives me ideas and it's something that I might be able to use in my next project. So, so there's really two ways of watching it. One is a, someone who loves movies and, and, and the other one is someone who loves shooting and lighting, so trying to take ideas away. Maybe the difference is sometimes that, you know, if you're doing a TV show, there's a lot of people who have something to say. You've got the producers, the director, you've got the production company, you maybe have the TV channel. They all might have their opinions. If you do a movie, if you do an independent movie, you only have the director and yourself. Those are the people who decide exactly what that film's gonna be like, which is great, you know, because you, you're completely your own boss, you can decide what, what it is you want to do. Um, when you do something that's bigger, a studio picture, you know, then you have the studio who has an idea of what they want and how they want it to be, so you're not as much in control. But saying that, you know, I've always been very lucky and I've always worked on TV projects as well, like Game of Thrones, who they really appreciate the art of cinematography they really want it to look the best and they give you as a cinematographer a huge amount of freedom to do what you want to do. In, in my career span, cinematography has reached its peak, then it died or it didn't die, it got killed and then it got reborn and started evolving again. So. I was still shooting a lot of film when I was uh, starting out my career as a professional cinematographer. I was shooting Super 16 and 35mm and at that time we had reached the pinnacle of film. You know, they had developed cameras that were super silent, they were super steady. Um, they had developed film stocks like the Kodak Vision 3, which was the 500, was pristine film stock had no grain, had a beautiful latitude, had a beautiful color reproduction. So we, it's very funny because we came to a point where after a hundred years, we made the best cameras and the best film stock. And exactly at that precise moment, they decide that we don't want to shoot film anymore. We're going to go back, we're going to go shoot digital. So they kill film at that very moment when we actually come to the best of the way that film has been. And we start shooting digital with you know, back then, cameras that weren't as good as they are today. So over the over the last few years, those cameras slowly evolved in becoming better and better cameras because everybody loves the look of film, but we were shooting digital, which couldn't give you the look of film. And so you started to, you know, we were shooting the Sony Cine Alta back then. Then suddenly we started to shoot with Pro 35 adapters so we could use the old film lenses and to give us the same depth of field that you would get of a film lens. 
and it went through a terrible phase of using horrible cameras with horrible adapters. The cameras were like huge, massively long, you couldn't do a car shot easily, stuff like this. To finally where, you know, um, something like the Alexa came out. Uh, and, and now we're at the stage after 10 years where you have a digital camera that, you know, is very nice to work with from a, from a working practice. And it also has a very pleasant um, feel about it to, to that when you look at it, the image it creates is beautiful. And uh, so we're back at, at a stage now where, you know, it becomes better. But obviously the industry is changing a lot. The cameras are changing every day. Everything is changing a lot more quick, quicker. You've got cameras which are super small these days and still shoot 4K high definition. I mean, it's all, you know, it's changing rapidly. So, but yeah, it's, you know, it's just the way it goes. Very early on, I've got collaborations with people I met at film school, collaborations with people I met at the EFC. Um, there's a couple of people who I met later on in England at the film school who, you know, I had amazing creative relationships with. Um, and then, you know, when I started professionally, there's people who are still work today, you know, there's Paul Whittington, who did a job with called Mrs. Biggs and, and other jobs, but you know, that was, you know, we have a great working relationship. There's Paul McGuigan, who I owe a, a lot to because he's an amazing director and he opened a lot of doors for me. He gave me a lot of chances. And then there's, um, you know, people like David Blair, who I love working with. And then there's Miguel Sapochnik, who I've done all the Game of Thrones with, and we've become very good friends and, and, and we have a, an amazing uh, relationship because we're so, we really push each other to, to, do, to try and do the best stuff we can. So generally, as a cinematographer, you, you do a lot of work with the production designer because, you know, the designer normally has a great idea of what they want the set to be like and they have a thought about colors and everything. But when you come in and when you start collaborating and, and working together, it really becomes much more of a theme throughout the whole film. So you talk about colors and set builds and locations and all of that. You talk about this all the time. You want to try and get all of this done before you start shooting. You know, you want to know because you have an input into the way they build the sets because you know about your lighting, so you can influence where they're going to put a window um, or the size of the window, you know, or where they're going to put, you know, a camera trap, for example. All of those things are part of prep and they always involve the DP and the designer and the director to work together and, and figure all of these things out.